what's up my name is technobo here for chocolate shoe and welcome back to another video so the amazing people over at daddy sent me two products to look at the hdtx wireless recorder and surprise the daddy s mic too we'll be getting to this in just a moment first of all we'll look at the hdtx it's a small portable recorder and wireless transmitter. It comes with a service warranty and quick start manual, and inside of it a standard USB-C to USB, a handy dandy little USB-C to USB adapter, as well as a nice little carry case with a hole in the bottom for the connectors and a screen on it. And of course, the crazy vape mod looking HDTX. It comes complete with standard I.O., including a TRS and XLR port, as well as a power slash mute indicator and a pairing indicator. Note that if I had actually made note of this flashing indicator telling me it was muted, I wouldn't have to record half this video again. Anyways, it's mostly simple to use and on the side we have the other I.O. A USB-C for charging, a headphone port, as well as a micro SD card. For me, it seems to be pulling up on one side, but this is the side that it rotates from. So pulling up the other side, it reveals the port. Inside of here, I'll stick a micro SD and lucky for me, I have an old one lying around. With new phones not supporting this, I think it's found a new home. I'll place it with the connector side pointing up towards the controls and I'll push it into place. Covering it up, you you can use this with or without an SD card, as long as you have it plugged into a computer, you can use it as an audio DAC. To start it up, I'll hold the back power button, and as you can see, the indicators at the top come alive with the screen as well. Of course, I've already pre-charged this, and I'll head into the menu here to show you what it has. From the input selector, we can choose TRS and XLR, and for the XLR, we have 48 volt phantom power options. The S Mic 2 needs phantom power, so I'll be leaving this on. Then input gain, low cut, we can choose all the way between off 20 hertz and all the way up to 200 hertz the limiter we can turn on and off frequency boost between 0 1 and all the way up to 10 decibels rf power for transmitting from this thing but for me i won't be using this so i'll set it to auto then headphone we can turn down the volume and on the file section we can see our previous recordings i have a test recording lying around here mute does pretty much exactly what it says and when we enable it you can see the indicator on the top flashes red personally i wouldn't use this here i'd use the hotkey or not use the mute feature at all user id we can change to set what text that sticks onto our audio files pair at the very bottom we can choose yes or no the system set sub menu where inside of it we get the mute hotkey toggle to turn it on or off entirely I'd recommend turning this off if you're not going to use the mute feature at all. Pair light, auto lock, USB options for transferring files, SD card options for formatting it, or we can click the remain option to see how much is remaining. System reset, obviously what you think. And if you'd like to transfer files to your PC, head into the user menu, storage, and as soon as you do this, you can plug it into a PC to transfer files. Besides that, there's firmware, which we can update through a USB drive or micro SD, set date time, and set a language at the very bottom. With that, I'll be holding the power button and we can turn this off to come back to it later on. Now let's have a look at the Deity S Mic 2 that comes in a nice thick Pelican case. It's got spots on the side for what I can only assume would be a locks and popping it open, we have the main prize. There's a warranty card and a quick start guide if you'd need that for some reason, as well as a nice little adapter to get this to your mic stand. Of course, if you don't have one of these or one of the correct size. Then we have a simple wind filter over here, nothing too crazy, but it does its job. And finally, the S Mic 2. It's got a very unique texture on it that I haven't seen before, and on the back, an XLR connector. It's a standard shotgun microphone that has a ton of power packed into it. Later on, you'll see just how far above its bracket this thing actually punches. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get this set up to get testing with it. And just so you know, this voiceover was recorded with the Deity S Mic 2. Now that I'm on my desktop, I can simply pull up my sound options, and in Zynivium, under the recording tab, you'll see my usual method of input, my Audient ID4 scene DAC, but scrolling down, you'll also see the Deity HDTX microphone. If I right-click and choose Properties, you'll see that the Advanced tab, we only have one option here, 2-channel, 24-bit, 4800Hz. This is really good, but a lot of recorders usually go up to 96k. To be perfectly honest, for voice work, this is perfectly fine. In fact, usually better than what you get with most USB microphones that aren't 24-bit. As you can see, my recording over here is 24-bit 9600, and that's as high as my Audient ID14 will go. Usually microphones sit here in the 16-bit range. So it's a really good recorder, and it's really difficult to tell exactly what you're listening to, especially when you put certain effects on it. Currently speaking into the S 
mic too, a really popular option is to make it sound like the Sennheiser MKH416 is another shotgun microphone and it's really the industry standard that people usually go to. The Sennheiser MKH416 goes for a cool $1,000, so 16,000 Rand plus shipping and whatever else you may need to get if you want something like this in South Africa, for example. For a quick reference, the show SM7B, which is the usual microphone that I use specifically for its warm tone, is $400. That being said, you do need a ton of gain, so you will need yourself a separate preamp processor, a cloud lifter, or a fed head. For me, I've got both a Triton Audio fed head for $90 and a DBX. 286S for $255-ish dollars. A huge amount when you add it all up, but of course when you're working in XLR, there's no simple way to just plug it straight into your computer. Some of these microphones need a ton of power. That being said, the Deity S-Mic 2 goes for a cool $429, a little bit more expensive than a Shure SM7B, but when you can compare this to something like the MKH416, the industry standard for shotgun microphones, with a tiny bit of EQ, you can make it sound exactly like this. This is what the MK MKH416 sounds like, and I'm recording it through the S-Mic too. Well, of course, you could use EQ to modify basically any microphone to sound like any other microphone, at least to some extent. Having something that's at least close to it means you have to do minimal effort to try and change it, and of course it has some of the good qualities such as sound cancellation from the side, etc, etc. On top of this, I've got everything going into an Audient ID14, my audio DAC, it's a Mark 1 interface, but that goes for around $300. While this does have sound output from your computer as well, I don't think the HDTX has sound output, it's just a pure input device and portable recorder, and as well if you'd like to use it wirelessly, you can, assuming you have the correct products to match. The HDTX goes for $250. Now quickly, if you didn't exactly get this from the beginning of the video, Deity reached out to me very pleasantly and simply offered me anything from their catalog. I asked them if I could get a S-Mic 2, they agreed happily, and on top of that, and I asked them for an HDTX so I can take it on the go for unboxings and other kinds of recordings so I don't have to worry about lugging around a huge setup including a preamp processor, an audio interface, having a box that plugs directly into the microphone makes life a hell of a lot easier and it's really high quality. Of course, there are tons of different options, and I'm somewhat biased because they gave me free stuff. To be perfectly honest, this is the microphone that I've seen people comparing to the MKH416, the industry standard, the most. For example, here's Boost Junkie comparing the Deity S-Mic 2, MKH416, and a bunch of other YouTubers. And in fact, in this video here, you'll see the exact EQ that I used in this video previously, right over here, talking about how to change it from one mic into the other effectively. A very small amount of EQ needs to be done in order to change it to sound closer to a different microphone. But to be honest, every microphone has its own characteristics and you get them for what you want. I got the Show SM7B because it has a nice warm proximity effect, so when I speak close to it, it gives me that warmth in my voice that makes things really nice to listen to. Of course, you do get this with any kind of microphone, but I just like the warm sound of the SM7B, though I do do a ton of vocal processing. That being said, you can get a somewhat similar effect out of the S-Mic too, just do note that it does get a lot of plosives like any other mic to be honest, so using the windsock is something you might want to use if you don't have a separate pop filter to speak into, at least an inch or two away from the actual microphone itself. Have it too close, and it won't dissipate the wind enough when it hits the actual microphone capsule, and you'll end up hearing the exact same popping and plosive filter sound. So to be honest, this wasn't too much of a tech guide video, an educational video or anything like that. I simply unboxed these products that they sent over to me. I'm super grateful that they did as I'll definitely be using them a ton in future videos. And in fact, if I can get this to sound a little bit better than my SM7B, hey, it may be replacing it permanently. But that's for me to know and you to find out. If you hear that my videos change drastically in the future, just know that it's probably because of changed microphones from the SM7B to the S-Mic 2. Depending on where you are, this could be more or less useful as using a shotgun microphone with side cancellation can be a bit better for recording in reverby rooms. I'm currently working on different acoustic panels to put up in my room, so you'll eventually see a DIY acoustic panel video coming in the future, but that's a short while from now. Anyways, that's really about it for this quick video. Thank you all for watching, my name's been Techno over here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao!